So I'm back here with Kevin Folta, and this time we're going to talk about something a little, maybe less controversial. Okay. We're going to discuss kind of what you're working on right now in, in terms of science versus communication. Okay, so let's, look, maybe there's one part that will be controversial. Ooh, fun. I'll save that for the end. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so the main thing that we're interested in, the main thing I'm interested in, and this is in the big picture, is how do we help, how do we use science in the current tools of genomics? Yeah. So understanding um, genes on a global scale and how they work. How do we use those technologies to make um, plants or to generate plants that work better for farmers and are better for consumers? Um, how do they help our industry? How do they help us remain competitive? At the same time, how do we learn really cool things that can inform um, agriculture on a bigger scale that people all over the world can use? Yeah. So what can benefit Florida farmers but also change the way they maybe grow strawberries in Italy? Oh, wow. I think we can do that. And so we're very interested in using the genomics tools mostly to study flavors, uh, resistance to disease, and other really key attributes. Of Whoa, flavors? You're studying flavors right now in what? In strawberry. A lot of people will tell you that the strawberry has lost a lot of its flavor over the years. And that's true. Yeah. Because our objectives, the, the objectives of breeders have been more strawberries, longer season, more yield, mm -hmm. resistance to disease, and, and shipping well. They don't worry about flavors. Right. It's about getting a good product to the market hmm. that is reasonable and that consumers will enjoy, but at the same time, you're doing so at the expense of flavors. Right. So some consumers are like, this is tasting a little boring? Yes. Oh. And they don't buy very much. The numbers show that, that there's a lot of room for the industries to grow. Right. So now what we're trying to do is bring those flavors back. Mm -hmm. And it's not hard to do because we know about where they were lost, and we can use genomics and molecular tools to identify who has these, who doesn't, use consumers to help us make, uh, define our breeding targets, and then uh, use genetics to bring those all together, and use molecular tools to trace in plants where those flavors are going. Oh my goodness. So these aren't GMOs, yeah. but they're, um, we're bringing genes in, because we know what genes are affecting flavor, we can trace them with very simple um, genetic tools. Yeah, so where, what stage are you at right now with this? Well, we just uh, are publishing a paper which fits, which shows that we identified the gene that causes the peach notes in the strawberry. The what? Uh, uh, peach flavors. Oh, okay. So if you think of it like this, that strawberry is an orchestra yeah. of flavors, 360 different instruments. Oh my. And some of the instruments are louder and more important than others. Um, one for peach, one for grapes, one for fruity. And we identified the peach note yeah. in that orchestra. And now. And how important is that one? It's important. Consumers like it. Oh. And they don't know they like it. It's right. just in the fruit when they enjoy the fruit. So what we're trying to do is fortify fruits with fruity, floral, um, other uh, very sweet flavors that have been lost. So have people been trying the differences? Um, we have been. Oh. So we can go into the field and taste the ones that have the different components. And you can, if you know what you're sniffing for and yeah. tasting, you can taste the difference. Yeah, and you, have, you prefer the, the more peachy. I, I like the peachy and the grapey. <laughs> Very scientific terms. <laughs> yeah, no, the grapey ones are fantastic. And, right. and when you grind them, you can smell the, 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 the real strong grape smell coming from your strawberry. Um, it's that combination of flavors that forms um, a, a strong um, fruity essence and a sweetness in the aroma that is really lacking. And like half the taste is in the smell or something. Well, it's a big part of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's how you smell it as it's going in. It's how you smell it as you're chewing it coming up from behind. They always call it retronasal. Oh. So this is work that's not in my lab. This is by our collaborators at University of Florida. All we do are identify the genes and then figure out ways to trace those genes from generation to generation to try to bring them all into one common background that'll taste better. Mm, interesting. And you're also working on some light yeah, stuff? Yeah, so that's, that's the interesting part. Is that, well, the other part's interesting too, I hope. Yeah. Um, maybe the controversial part. So we have been studying, I've been studying light since uh, 1987. And what about light? And what about light? The way that light controls genes and basic processes in plant development. We always did this in organisms that maybe didn't matter very much, like oh. laboratory plants. But now we're taking the same principles and expanding them to plants people care about. Right. And now what we can do is use technology like LED technology, which is becoming very cheap and available, and be able to say, we can control how big that lettuce plant gets and what color it is. Oh. What does it have for nutrition, for flavor? What does it have for anti-cancer compounds? All just by light? Just by changing the light environment. And I just thought light was good for photosynthesis. Well, that's what all of us thought. Yeah. You know, we, think, we commonly think it was photosynthesis. That's what yeah. we need. But we forget that light is a packet of instructions 
and that when you're a plant and you're stuck in one place with a root, different parts of the spectrum can have profound effects on the decisions you make. Mm -hmm. and, and so what we can do is essentially paint plants based upon the colors of light provide. Really? So why would we want to paint plants? Well, the, the colors are associated with different levels of nutrition. Oh. And if you think about people saying, eat your purple fruits, you right. know, your antioxidant rich fruits. Yeah. So what we can do is we can take a plant and place it under very specific conditions. And it depends on the plant. We can take sprouts um, from broccoli or from kales and make them so rich in antioxidants, they're almost black. Really? Uh, and I think there's something about the, the appearance too. Like I, I know some people that will buy a certain color of fruit just because it's fun. Oh yeah, sure. There's, there's a lot of novelty in that. Yeah. And what we've been able to do is come up with ways to make, uh, make these kind of small format crops like microgreens, lettuces, small lettuces, make these, uh, add more diversity just by flipping a switch. Mm -hmm. And that this helps a lot because consumers want them and growers have a better profit from selling them. So obviously this will all be uh, big implications potentially for the greenhouse market. Yes, huge yes. implications for the greenhouse market. And why is controversial? It doesn't seem like it should be. Yeah, it just seems we, like light. Well, we talk about GMOs, genetically modified organisms, and kind of the resistance you see in the public based upon that idea. Yeah. Um, I've been advocating our approach as EMOs for environmentally modified organisms. Oh. We place plants in environments that never have occurred before on the face of the earth. Right. These are completely unnatural. Which is a greenhouse setting anyway. Well, really? yeah, probably true. But now we're adding a light spectrum that's completely foreign, and a light spectrum which can uh, control traits in ways that we haven't necessarily assessed. To me, it's perfectly fine, it's perfectly acceptable, and it's perfectly safe. But um, it's funny that this technology will have no resistance and will be welcomed by the consumer. Um, or biotech. Whereas biotech is not. Yeah, yeah. And so you're looking at light in terms of um, color, in terms of height. Is there anything else that you're well, looking um, at? Uh, you mean the plants in terms of color? Yeah, like yeah. how the light influences the plant. Yeah, we can control plant stature. We can control plant metabolism. Yeah. We can control flavors. So once you take your strawberries off the plant and stick them into a carton, maybe they'll go to market under a different color of light and be displayed in the market. Oh, even post-production. Post-harvest, yeah, right? Okay. So our big thinking right now is working with grocery stores to, um, with the re retailer, that during evening hours, the plants make, the, the plant products for say strawberries might sit under blue, dim blue light for the entire night. Then in the morning when customers come in, switch to a combination of red and far red to cause a change in the emission of the volatiles. Um, those are just arbitrary examples I gave you, but that kind of science fiction isn't too far from science fact. Yeah, that and we, it's not changing the health or the safety of the organism. No, we're, we're just simply changing the light environment and changing the metabolism and the way in which the physiology is behaving. Is there anything else that you're working on right now or what you are excited to work on in the future? Well, those, those are really the, the biggest ideas. Is how, how are we, the challenge for us in Florida and throughout any of the big ag states is how do we generate more food for people that's more nutritious mm -hmm. and do so with less environmental impact. And so the baby steps that my lab is contributing to that conversation um, are just part of a much larger equation, a much, much larger effort to do this on many levels. And there's a lot of really great scientists doing this that I, I really admire and really admire the steps they're taking. Um, if I could even just get uh, this light regulated thing figure sorted out, I think I'd feel pretty happy about that.